What's up, it's your boy Stephen McCoy, and you are listening and watching Sessions with Stephen. And today we have Oscar winning creator and executive producer, producer of Netflix series Cat People, as well as what we like to call doggy series, the docu series dolls, <laughs> Mr. Glenn Zipper. How are you? Awesome, man. Thanks for having me on. Stephen McCoy, my boy, Stephen McCoy, I need something like that. Is there uh, you know, <laughs> something for Zipper? Uh, Zipper with, <laughs> that's hilarious. Now, let's get into, the, I mean, you've been all over the, you've been creating for a very long time. And boy, um, have you reaped the benefits of your hard work. Um, so congratulations on that. I love what, that you're bringing a sense of humanity into Netflix um, dolls. Let's talk about that. Um, one thing I, I can say about me was um, I've always been afraid of dolls when I was younger. Interesting. Now, now, but, but I tell you why. It's because okay. from where I come from, I come from North New Jersey, and a lot of people, they would make their dogs vicious and mm -hmm. and things of that nature so um but as i grew and and, and traveled a lot i started to see wow uh, not every dog are vicious like that <laughs> yes and and also <clears throat> i'm a new jersey boy so zoom oh, fist wow. bump. yeah there uh, we go jersey there we go. <laughs> I'm, from, I'm not too far from newark i was in portly new jersey so um, I'm glad we have that in common. But yeah, I totally understand. There, there are people, you know, every time I see a story on the news about a dog that's attacked someone, I always say, hold on, can we also see the family that that dog belonged to? Because you know, usually the dog is the reflection of um, the, the people that care for the dog, or in some cases don't really care for the dog. Um, and you know, dogs are not born vicious for the oh, most part. I mean, there's always aberrations, you know, dogs that may have a behavioral issue that they're born with. But most cases, you know, if you're going to, if you love your dog, if you treat your dog well, if you keep your dog indoors and you, know, you, you teach them and you train them and you um, train them to uh, particularly respect boundaries, they're going to be good dogs. So I totally understand your experience, but I'm glad that you've come over to the other side and now have some love in your heart for dogs. I, I definitely have love in my heart for dogs. And um, my father, he was, he's a big dog person to this day. And he loved dogs, but still sometimes I'm like, oh, they got a bite or, you know, I just, right. but then all I do is just need to stick around them for about, you know, three minutes and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm good. But why do you think that is? Why do you think uh, there's this, uh, fear for people um, with animals. Well, I think it's exactly like your experience. If you've had a bad experience with something, then you're going to be cautious. You know, uh, we've all had bad experiences with something in our lives that typically isn't dangerous, but because we had a bad experience with it, we're afraid of it. And then it's about doing what you've done, which is you do the work to give them a second chance or to confront that which you were afraid of. And then I would say nine out of 10 times, it turns out that your, your worst fears are not realized. Right, right. So talk to us about this docu-series dogs. That's What's going uh, Well, it's it going will be released on July 7th. Exactly. And it's going to be the second season of dogs. So if people haven't seen the show yet, they can watch it right now and just watch season one and get up to speed. Every episode is its own story. So it's not like you have to watch the first season in order to understand the second season. And every episode is its own distinct journey where we're following human characters and dog characters who are bonded and are going on some sort of experience or journey together. And we're following that story in real time, just like a scripted film. This isn't people sitting in chairs, giving you expert advice on how to train your dog. They're not people sitting in chairs telling you why dogs evolve from wolves or how they evolve from wolves or why they wag their tails. These are stories with a beginning, middle, and an end. And you see them happening as they happen in real time. And you know, internally, we have a little joke. We don't rate the episodes uh, one to five stars. We rate them one to five tissue boxes in terms of how many times you're going to cry right. when you watch the episode. And spoiler alert, no dogs die. No dogs are hurt. Good, when I, good. When I say good. you're going to cry, you're, they're going to be happy tears. They're going to yeah. be happy tears. 
I, I love that. Um, and I see that, yes, yeah, every story is different. How would you, I mean, did you go in with uh, various producers and, and said, hey, um, I would like you to direct this and I would like you to produce this piece? How did you get mm -hmm. to the different stories? Well, uh, there's there's two um, executive producers on the show, myself and Amy Berg. We're partners on the show. What we do is we have casting professionals to go out in the world to find help us find these stories. And then Amy and I and our larger team, we go through the stories and decide which we think are the best of the bunch. And those are the episodes that we decide we're going to produce. And then once we decide what those episodes are, we assign them to particular directors. But they're always award-winning top flight a-list documentary filmmakers i think in season one everyone was either an oscar winner or an emmy winner and we tried to do the same in in season two and so these are really like they're almost like their own award-winning documentary films in their own right each episode yeah i love that and there, there's always uh one episode that everyone can at least relate to to some capacity or you feel uh, some sort of uh, something in your heart when you're watching it. Now, yeah, what would be your favorite um, episode? Would you say? Yeah, it's tough because they're 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 all they feel like they're all our children, right? So you don't want to pick favorite. <laughs> but I would say, um, you know, there's a episode in season two um, called "The Protectors," and it's about a priest in Brazil who he has his human congregation but he also has his anim homeless animal congregation. He's made it his life's work to uh, care for and rescue the dogs that are homeless in his own community. And if there was ever a priest that should be put up for sainthood, it's this guy. And he's just such a remarkable, lovely, sweet character, just so full of heart and generosity that I think the world's gonna absolutely fall in love with him. And what's great is when they do fall in love with him, hopefully they'll give him some support and help his work. That's so great. That that is a, a was a touching one. Um, it just made me think because um, I'm actually legally blind, so mm -hmm. um, I've been um, definitely doing my research in adopting a dog uh, as a guide dog, mm -hmm. and um, it I, I just feel like it, it it's just an interesting whole docu series and it, it this also it can be taken as research for me <laughs> so absolutely that's great and i know you have a dog named anthony right mm -hmm. and well, he, he, sadly he passed away right before the the pandemic started but that's it's okay we had 17 years together which is i, I certainly didn't get cheated but you know he was my best friend for all those years and really inspired the series you know, I never had a dog of my own before Anthony came into my life and he absolutely changed my life. When I met him, I had a completely different existence. I was, a, I was actually in New Jersey and I was working as a criminal prosecutor in Hudson County, so New Jersey City, Hoboken, et cetera. And when I brought him into my life and I started working in animal rescue, it occurred to me that that was something I could do where I was actually making a difference in my life. I didn't feel like I was making a difference as a prosecutor. We don't need to go into the criminal justice system, but it feels like you don't do a lot of good as a prosecutor. You're just sort of putting people through the revolving turnstile of the system, which doesn't help anybody. Yeah. But when you're rescuing animals, you really are, you're saving lives. And I said, well, what can I do with my life where I can affect people uh, permanently, where I can just keep doing stuff to you know, affect people emotionally and otherwise, and, and it, when possible, effectuate change and so i decided to become a storyteller and moved out to hollywood with anthony and through a lot of hard work and probably even more luck um had some success and here we are today talking about dogs on netflix love that and what a beautiful um moment i must say for after award night you know when everyone you know won an, an award including yourself um you went back home to walk your own walk anthony Yes, that's right. That's when uh, we produced a film called Undefeated, which won the Oscar for Best Documentary, and everyone went out and, you know, partied. And I said, you know, I, I'm going to take a pass on that. I'll, I'm going to go home and, and, and celebrate with Anthony because he was waiting for me. That is so amazing. What do you think that connection is between, uh, you know, an animal and a human? And when I, when I ask that, I mean, because there are some people who just, don't get 
the connection of an animal and, you know, between an animal and human being. I was one of those people at first. Yeah. Um, until obviously, you know, me and my family, we've experienced loss with, with animals. So um, I understand. Yeah. Well, that connection, I think it has to do with, um, you know, we have human beings in our life, even our close friends, they always want something from us. There always has to be that exchange, you know, and sometimes that's hard, you know, even if what they want from you is perfectly reasonable, it requires you to, you know, give so much of yourself. Whereas with dogs and other animals, they really don't expect anything of you. They give you unconditional love. They just love you for being you. And how many people do we have in our lives, humans do we have in our lives, who just love us for being who we are? Some of, we, we have some people like that, usually they're family or our best, best friends, but it's hard to find people in our extended universes who will just love us for whoever we are. You know, no matter how we're feeling about ourselves, no matter where our self-esteem is, no matter if we're having success, no matter if we're failing, no matter if we're doing the right thing or making mistakes, animals are always going to love us. And I think that that's where that connection comes from. Now, is it true that, okay, for, for male owners, that the female dogs are more territorial and vice versa for, um, for female owners, the male dogs are more territorial? Just I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, but I, I have I have observed that when um, when Anthony was still here, you know, if I had a girlfriend and I would, like put my arm around her or she put her arm around me, Anthony would get in the middle of us and say, "No, no, 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 no. he's mine. He's mine. He only wants to. He's like, you can't love anyone but me." See, I love that. Like, how could you just because of little things like that? How could you not want a doggy? How could you not? But. I, I love that. Now let's speak about uh, cat people. Um, mm-hmm. Now, how long did it take you to film that? Uh, it took about a year, and and most of it was shot over the pandemic, which was really really difficult. But we had a great team, and who were outstanding. Not just as it in terms of the production elements, but dealing with the COVID protocols and keeping everybody safe. But yeah, I think give or take, it took about a year. Wow. Um, now, did you ever have a cat yourself uh, growing up? And... I sure did. Not growing up, but when I was a young, young dude in law school, I had three cats. I live in a little apartment with three cats. Wow. And uh, I never intended to have three cats. I had one, and then another one came into my life through happenstance. And then I was coming home one day, and there was another one in front of my building on the street. There was a kitten. And then, like, I don't know what happened. I woke up one morning, and I had three cats. So, I, and you know, I think that the, the bond is the same. You know, cats are very different. They're more independent. They're more um, engaging with you on their own terms, but they give you the same amount of love and it's the same type of unconditional love. They don't want anything for, from you other than your love and affection and of course, snacks and food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you, when you release these uh, documentaries, um, wow, it, it seemed like the public gravitated automatically, like it, it's crazy. It is this whole little community. That's what, yeah. well, not little, a huge community, but almost feels somewhat sacred. Like everyone understands each other. Everyone understands their love for their, uh, for their pet. So yeah. What keeps you going as a creator? What, what has driven you? Um, well, I think curiosity, you know, it's, our job is storytelling. And we, we want to go on these journeys and discover something and learn something from our experience. And when we finish a production, whether it's a film or a series, we're always gonna have new questions and new curiosities. So it's on to the next, whether it's another season of dogs or another season of cat people or something that has nothing to do with animals. I think we're always gonna be chasing that dragon, trying to learn new things. And when we learn those, those new things, see how they change us and our experience and our perspective. Where can we expect next from you? I mean, we have a uh, dog coming on July 7th, which is obviously a lot, um, but you've always gotten your hands full and a bunch of things. <laughs> yeah, well, both dogs and cat people are coming on July 7th. So the, so the yeah. dog people and the cat people are going to have to battle it out to see uh, who, who can get more eyeballs on the show. We'll see who, which show yeah. wins. Um, after that, what's next is a show that we produced with Bad Robot 
and J.J. Abrams called UFO, which is, guess what, about UFOs. Um, and that's a four-episode series that's going to be on Showtime uh, on August 8th. And uh, we take a really close look at UFO phenomena and uh, all the disclosures that are happening about UFOs right now. It's a really exciting series. It's a bit creepy, very different than dogs and cat people. And yeah. uh, if anyone is concerned that uh, that's that that means I will no longer be making shows about animals, you'd be greatly mistaken because we already have another show in production called The Bond uh, with uh, Susan Downey and Robert Downey Jr. producing with us. And that's about our relationships with animals that were never supposed to be domesticated. Now, don't get me wrong, we're not talking about exotic pets. That's, a, that's not cool. People shouldn't keep exotic pets. We're talking about animals that were never supposed to be domesticated that are thrust into the lives of humans because of extraordinary circumstances, usually because the animal is in need and needs help. And that series is coming together wonderfully. and We're really excited to bring it to folks. Love that. Mr. Glenn Dipper, you are on fire this summer and all the way to the fall. You, you're going to be pretty busy. <laughs> no sleep. No sleep for me. Team No Sleep, but thank you so much for coming on to Sessions with Steven. Hey, subscribe now.